Well, everyone will assume we're talking about Lebanon because of the huge explosion on the 4th of August. And we're going to talk about that in a moment. But many at Christchurch will know that we've adopted Lebanon as one of our mission destinations. Uh, they may know of our involvement with the mission organization Horizons International based in Beirut, and that we are developing a partnership with Tyre Church in South Lebanon. Um, but can you tell us some of the recent past leading up to the explosion? Yes, well, it's been a troubled country in a troubled region. Um, there was a civil war there in the latter half of the 1970s and throughout the 1980s. And since the civil war, there's been power sharing between different factions. But there's also been lots more other troubles ever since then, skirmishes across borders and, and so forth. And recently, of course, there's been a major crisis next door in Syria. In awful hardship, there has actually been much good going on. Many Lebanese nationals and Syrian refugees have heard and believed the good news and hope of Jesus. And old enemies are now new friends, forgiven and free. So there's good things happening. Um, we last visited Lebanon in June 2019 with the team, but lots has changed even since then. In October 2019, there were anti-government protests. The currency dropped its value by 60% between October and June this year. And many Lebanese themselves are now struggling, let alone the refugees. Massive job losses going on. In fact, only last month, during the COVID crisis, during this pandemic, the American University of Beirut's medical center let go 850 staff. 850. And they're the second main employer of Lebanese in the country. So imagine laying off hundreds of healthcare professionals in a pandemic. <laughs> Crazy. And we went to help Syrian refugees. But now many middle class Lebanese are struggling to feed themselves on top of all that. But again, in the midst of all this, there is still hope. The church has been helping people with food and sharing the gospel. Indeed, in villages close to the Israel border, the church is selling farm produce to local Muslim villagers at really good price. And this has led to lots of great gospel opportunities and, and real welcome uh, of the church. Wow. And then on top of all this hardship came the explosion of the 4th of August, um, pretty much wiping out Beirut port. Um, it seems symptomatic of so many of the troubles. Yeah, absolutely. The, the country's been imploding, which could have catastrophic implications regionally, if not beyond. And this explosion seems to have woken up the world to that imploding reality. So where are we up to now then? Well, we've all heard the news, so many dead, hundreds of thousands of people, Lebanese people, suddenly homeless. But moreover, there's also despair. Um, I mean, the good news is that governments, aid agencies, so many ordinary people there, as well as overseas, want to help. But of course, the key thing about the church is they're also taking the hope of the gospel along with their humanitarian aid. In fact, let me just read this, which sums up so much of what is going on and some of the concerns there. This is from Pastor Mohammed Yamut, who's the pastor of the church we're partnering with in Tyre. And he said this on Facebook the other day. He said, the story of Alan is the story of the Christian presence in the Middle East. He says, this morning, we are back at the scene of the explosion only to meet a middle-class young man living with his parents in a house that's over 100 years old, with all the difficulties still living. But suddenly, a devastating explosion changed his whole life. I lost everything. My answer, no, Alan, you did not. God is good. Dear brethren, the devastating explosion mainly hit the Christian areas close to the port. Many Christians are starting to pack their bags to leave. 
especially if they're like Alan, having lost everything. Regardless of our differences as Christians, we need to be there for each other. I pray that the church will rise up to the needs of the Christians who have been devastated by the explosion. It's powerful stuff to hear what Mohammed has to say on the ground there. Um, so what are the concerns for the future? Yeah, well, as a journalist on TV just uh, after the explosion said, what happens in Lebanon doesn't just affect Lebanon. It affects the whole Middle East, which affects the world. And with the Syrians in the north and the east uh, and tensions across that border, and also tensions between Israel and Hezbollah to the south, and given the history of the region, which stretches way back to Old Testament times, you can imagine how precarious it all could become. Mm. So we need to pray for stability in Lebanon and its surrounding. So how can we help? We can pray, we can give, and we can help practically. And we can see how to do all that on our website. We've been linked with a key evangelical mission and developing partnership with the church, as we've said, all prior to the 4th of August. But that's a partnership that's continuing to be developed. And the great thing is that we can all help adults and children. So isn't that exciting? That's really good. Um, thanks, Lindsay, for just sharing some of your experience. Um, as Lindsay said, there's more information on our website. So if you go to ChristChurchLiverpool.org slash Lebanon, you will find all the information there on um, things that you can be involved in from praying to giving to helping. Um, why don't I just end in praying for um, the situation over there at the moment? So let's pray. Lord, you can do the impossible in a country where the government have just resigned we ask that you would be at work to bring about a new government that would put an end to the deeply entrenched corruption, that you would enable religious freedoms, um, that your church would thrive there as it shares a message of hope. And we, we long and we pray that many, many would turn to you and put their trust and their hope in you. Amen. Amen. Amen.